Hello everybody, this is Ended Viking here again with a, another video review. Uh, this will be kind of a quicker review, uh, just because this is kind of a filler game. Uh, the game is uh, Godzilla Stomp. Um, I don't know. I mean, it's a, it's a card game. Uh, it's about trick taking, and it's really easy to learn, really easy to teach. So I'm gonna take just a couple of quick moments to uh, show you exactly how the game's played, and then I'll tell you exactly uh, what I think about the game and whether or not it's gonna be a good fit for you. All right, let's do this. Arr, Godzilla. Godzilla. All right, Godzilla Stomp is a card game, and uh, these are the cards that represent each of the different monsters. Each person gets to be one. Here's Godzilla, uh, Mecha Godzilla, Mothra, uh, Batra, and like Destoroya or something like that. I don't know. I I've never even heard of Batra or Destoroya, but I mean the other ones I have heard of, as you probably have as well. It uh, doesn't really matter which one you pick, uh, it's just personal preference because each person's cards will be exactly the same. You'll have a card uh, numbered 1 through 5 and a Rampage card. You take those cards, you can look at all of them at the exact same time. Depending on the number of players, you have this card that is the uh, building or city deck. Uh, city cards come in two different types. You either get a power plant or a city with a number. You're going to be taking these cards as tricks, so if you get the one with a number, it's worth 5 points. And if you take power plants, for each power plant you have, it's worth uh, a certain number of points. If you only have one, it's worth two. Two is worth four, three is worth six, four is worth eight. Pretty obvious. So depending on the number of players, you're gonna turn a certain number of these cards over. Uh, let's just say we're having a four player game, so we're gonna turn six over. You just turn these over and everybody can see these. They're just placed in front of the entire board. Uh, two power plants and a seven and a five. So the, the power plants, uh, as I said, are worth these variable numbers, but these numbers will either be a 3, 5, 7, or 9. Now you just place this off to the side. At the beginning of the game, you're randomly going to pick somebody to have the tiebreaker token. You'd have to supply your own. I just have a little dinosaur from my uh, daughter's toy collection. And so you place that, and whoever has that or whatever has that in front of them. So each person then will place a card in front of them as far as uh, the number of points they're willing to spend to try to earn one of these cards. Uh, well, whoever plays the highest number gets first choice, and the next person gets second choice, and the next person gets second choice, and so on and so forth. Obviously, if one or more people uh, play the exact same number, uh, that's where the tiebreaker comes in. If the person that has the tiebreaker token uh, is the uh, person that has tied, then you know they obviously uh, win the tiebreaker and they get to take uh, first choice ahead of the person that's there. And I should note that it isn't called a tiebreaker. It's called a tie smasher. Anyway, so it's, and if the people, two people that tie don't have this, neither of them have this token, it's the person closest to the person with the tie smasher clockwise around the table. Now, that's going to be pretty evident. You're already pretty much guessing how the game is played. The only difference is if you play a Rampage card. If you play a Rampage card, uh, what that does is that whatever cards are left at the table, the person who played the Rampage card gets to take those cards. Obviously, since we're playing with four people and they're going to play, you know, people are going to take, you know, one, two, three, the person who ends up with the Rampage card gets to take all the cards that are left on the table. If two people play a Rampage card, the tiebreaker then goes into effect once again, and the person that is closest to or has the tiebreaker smasher token uh, has to at least leave one card for each of the other people, and they, they take that for as many people out of the Rampage. After six rounds have gone by, every person's used up every single one of these cards that they have in their hand, you just look and see what, what cards you took, what tricks you took, basically. Total up the points. Whoever's got the most points wins the game. The only other difference is, as far as where the tie smasher goes, it's whoever played the lowest number card on that turn. So if you play to one, uh, then you're going to get the tie smasher. If uh, more than one person uh, ties uh, for the lowest card, that uh, the person who selected the building last on the board uh, will actually then get this tie smasher. So uh, that's uh, how you play Godzilla Stomp. Let's uh, see what I thought of it. Up from the
30 stories high. Breathing fire. Uh, you can't really see Godzilla. It's just his, like, foot there. But I don't know if you'd be able to see this, but I think this is really cool. On the side here, it says, you know, the standard, how many, what ages and above, and, like, the number of players. Um, if it's if you look there, it's, like, actually Godzilla's hand, you know, saying that uh, it's for three to five people and, and uh, 14 or higher, or two to five people, I should say. I don't know if you can see that or not, but it's kind of neat. I mean, it's just, I, I like it when uh, game companies have a little bit of a sense of humor uh, when they do things. And, then, you know, most people are just going to see that and then I really, really notice it. But there you go. That's where it is. Um, I mean, the game could not be more simple. Uh, play a card, take your points, play a card, take your points, play a card, take your points. You'll be able to play this game in five, six minutes. It's definitely geared towards a younger audience or... Uh, geared towards just being a filler. I mean, there is no even connection with the theme with the actual mechanics. I, I almost feel like it's a really simplified version of For Sale in a way. I mean, it's just like you see what's available for you, uh, you pick your best available uh, card that you think is going to be the, you know, easy for you, and then you just take what you have. I mean, it's good for what it is. I mean, it's definitely something that you can play a few hands of really quickly while you're waiting for somebody else to show up so you can play your really serious game. But it's not a very serious game, and it isn't very difficult at all. I think it's a little ridiculous that they say it's for 14 and older. I mean, I have no idea why you'd have to be that old to really enjoy this game. As a matter of fact, I could definitely see, um, you know, 8, 9, 10-year-old kids actually probably enjoying the game a lot more than adults would. So, uh, if you got a little uh, kid that you want to buy a cool little game, and, you know, who doesn't like Godzilla? My daughter loves Godzilla. If you want to play a cool game, it'll teach him some math and, you know, it'll teach him just, you know, kind of how to, you know, make good choices as far as, you know, when they're taking tricks and something like that. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, it's cheap and it's quick and it's it's fun to play. Other than that, um, if you're looking for something serious or you're looking for a good filler or you're looking for something for your game group, I really can't recommend the game at all. Uh, it's very simple. It's very simplistic and you're not going to like it. So, there you go, uh, Godzilla Stomp. Uh, thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions or concerns, as always, leave them below, and I'll answer them as quick as I can. I'll talk to you later.